U.S. and China are in a new Cold War, but California is cozying up to China, selling out the country in the name of fighting climate change. The smog must have gotten to them. Welcome to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. You may have heard that U.S.-China relations are deteriorating, that the relationship is extremely fragile, and that top U.S. officials have failed to thaw a standoff. Johnny Depp and Amber Heard have a better chance of fixing their relationship at this point. Biden even calls Xi Jinping a dictator. But one area where Biden is hoping the U.S. and China can put aside their differences and cooperate is climate change. And uh, the world expects, I believe, China and the United States to play key roles in addressing global challenges from climate uh, changes to food insecurity and uh, for us to be able to work together. Because obviously an authoritarian regime that uses rape as a form of torture really cares about the environment. Their primary EVs are executions and violence. Biden's climate envoy John Kerry traveled to Beijing in July to try to restart climate talks, but left Beijing empty-handed. But you know who is signing climate deals with China? California Governor Gavin Newsom. In fact, he just signed his second one last month. According to Politico, that makes Newsom the most effective U.S. negotiator on international climate cooperation right now. But his negotiation skills get questionable when you actually look at what's in the deal. He signed a memorandum of understanding with the province of Hainan, which most importantly has no legal obligations in it. While California may actually be trying to cut its carbon emissions, China just wants the free publicity of looking green without actually having to be green. We know that because while China says its goal is to peak carbon emissions by 2030, it approved the equivalent of two new coal plants a week last year. The only green thing about coal plants is this kind of green. Newsom signed another agreement in April with China's environment minister, which according to Newsom would deepen California's strong climate and clean energy ties with China. That was actually the renewal of an agreement made by former California Governor Jerry Brown. And like the other one, it also has no legal obligations. Now, the fact that something as meaningless would be negotiated by Jerry Brown should come as no surprise. Jerry Brown is one of the worst China apologists you can find in American politics, which is just one of the many reasons California became one of the states with the friendliest relations with China, which is a little surprising since the California flag features a bear and Xi Jinping isn't the biggest fan of bears. Now, this may surprise you, but the Chinese Communist Party isn't signing non-legally binding climate memorandums because it really cares about the environment. It's part of a rather sinister plan, and California is falling for it, hook, line, and sinker. I'll tell you more right after this quick commercial break. Welcome back. If you just saw a black screen instead of an ad, that's because YouTube constantly demonetizes us. You may be surprised to learn that taking on the Chinese Communist Party hasn't made us very popular with advertisers. So we really rely on people like you to support us on the crowdfunding website, Patreon. You can join for as little as a dollar an episode and you get a bunch of cool perks, like the ability to ask me questions I'll answer at the end of the show. But so as I mentioned earlier, in a lot of ways, Washington is finally starting to wake up to the threat of the Chinese Communist Party. That meant for a time, China's former ambassador to the US, Qing Gang, wasn't able to meet with a lot of top US officials. So he just leapfrogged them. According to Bonnie Glazer, Asia Program Director at the German Marshall Fund, the story from the embassy was that Qing Gang wasn't being seen by US officials and was therefore spending time at the subnational level, going to visit mayors and governors. You heard that right. China's top diplomat just bypassed Washington and instead met with local and state officials. This is a long-standing strategy that China has used to get around Washington when it doesn't get the results at once. But California ate it up. In 2018, a member of the party school of the Jiangsu Provincial Committee published an article on China's relationship with California Governor Jerry Brown. He wrote, more and more scholars have turned their attention to the international activities of subnational governments, and a parallel diplomacy has emerged from this. 
This parallel diplomacy he's talking about is based off the idea that state and local governments have a certain amount of autonomy and they can have a certain effect on U.S. foreign policy. For example, China's Belt and Road Initiative. That's what the CCP calls its plan to give out crippling loans to other countries to build infrastructure. Countries all over the world have signed on because they're stupid, but not the U.S. because of obvious national security concerns. But guess who was stupid? California. While not officially a part of the Belt and Road, California did award a Chinese company a contract to build key parts of the San Francisco-Oakland Bay Bridge. What could go wrong? Having America's enemy build your bridges. I'll tell you, the contract was given to a Chinese company that was cheap, but had never actually built a bridge before. And that mistake ended up costing the taxpayers hundreds of millions of dollars. Oops. But getting back to this whole idea of parallel diplomacy, former California Governor Jerry Brown was the poster child of parallel diplomacy. He met with Xi Jinping multiple times when he was governor. And then after he left office, he was hired by UC Berkeley to head its California-China Climate Institute. I'm shocked that even exists. I mean, you'd think a Chinese-American Cold War and global warming would cancel each other out. Brown's become one of Beijing's biggest cheerleaders in Washington, because if we get tough on China, how can we work with them on climate change? Nothing is more important than uh, talking with China, working through our profound differences. It can be done. The Communist Party under Mao Zedong was far more uh, dangerous and hostile than the Communist Party under Pre President Xi Jinping. So why aren't we talking? And who knows, maybe China is serious about tackling climate change. After all, they're eliminating a lot of people's carbon footprints. The other reason California has rolled out the welcome map for China, though, is money. In 2012, one of Brown's goals in meeting with Xi Jinping, who was then China's vice president, was to foster the state's relationship with China's next leader and encourage foreign investment in the state. Now, whether it was Brown or just market forces, investment from China poured into California while he was governor. According to the Rhodium Group, California is by far the number one recipient of Chinese foreign direct investment among U.S. states. Now, that could be because California has some important industries, not just for California, but for the entire United States. Take Hollywood, for example. In 2012, Dolly and Wanda Group bought the theater chain AMC Entertainment for $2.6 billion. This made the Chinese company the biggest theater operator in the whole country. It has since divested from AMC, but that's far from the only way that Chinese money is controlling Hollywood. Film director Judd Apatow says big film conglomerates with business in China make sure that nothing critical of China gets into their movies. You're talking about global conglomerates that say, we still need to be able to sell a version of this in China. And so yeah. we're, we're not, even going to accept this in what's already being greenlit, let alone something that's more provocative. Yeah. Or it dies in the, in, the, uh, in the pitch phase. Hey, I want to write a, a movie about the concentration camps in China and, the, and Muslims in concentration camps. I want to write a movie about someone who escapes. No one would, would buy the pitch. Instead of us doing business with China and that leading to China becoming more free, what has happened, is a place like China has bought our silence with their money. Probably the most real example of this influence is what happened to actor Richard Gere after he called for Tibetan freedom during the 1993 Academy Awards ceremony. He was not only banned from attending the Oscars for 20 years, but he says he's been blacklisted in Hollywood ever since. But as bad as Chinese influence is in Hollywood, it's much, much worse in Silicon Valley. According to the Bay Area Economic Institute, California is the primary destination in the U.S. for China's outbound technology investment. Big Silicon Valley companies like Uber, Lyft, and Airbnb have all gotten substantial infusions of capital from China. While the Chinese Communist Party has made it extremely difficult for the U.S. to have tech companies operate in China, there's always the hope that China will change. And if China does change, that opens up a huge 1.4 billion people market.
For example, Google pulled out its search engine in China over the government's strict censorship rules. But Google parent company Alphabet Inc. continued to invest in Chinese companies. And in 2018, it was leaked that Google was trying to return to China and had been working on a censored version of the Google search engine. To be fair to Google, they're doing that because China's changed. They're now offering even more money. See? It's totally different. More recently, the former head of security at Twitter testified before Congress that a Chinese spy had infiltrated Twitter. I'm reminded of one conversation with an executive when I said, I am confident that we have a foreign agent, and their response was, well, since we already have one, what does it matter if we have more? Let's keep growing the office. What? That's like saying, I already have one knife wound. What does it matter if I have 20 or 30 more? Keep on stabbing. Unfortunately, with Elon Musk's ties to China, I don't have much hope things have gotten better. Facebook hasn't been immune to China scandals either. In 2018, it came out that Facebook gave data access to Chinese firms like Huawei that had been flagged by U.S. intelligence as a national security threat. When Silicon Valley Bank collapsed earlier this year, it came to light just how much it had been investing in Chinese startups. Now, Hollywood and Silicon Valley are huge industries in China. But believe it or not, China has infiltrated even more influential industries. I'll tell you more after this final commercial break. Welcome back. The Chinese Communist Party has been investing heavily in California, and one of the areas where it's been most successful is California's ports. Through its state-owned company, Costco, China co-owns a terminal at the port of Los Angeles. If that seems like a national security risk, then congrats, you have more common sense than California. Until 2019, Costco's Orient Overseas International Limited owned a container terminal at the port of Long Beach. The Trump administration saw that as a national security threat and forced it to sell. Because, duh, how can you not see that it's suspicious? China is literally a big red flag. There's also concern from the Pentagon that many of the gantry canes, which are used to unload cargo from ships, are imported from China. Cranes built by Chinese company ZPMC contain sophisticated sensors, prompting concern that China could capture information about material being shipped in or out of the country to support U.S. military operations around the world. Congress passed a defense bill last year that required the government to study the issue and submit a report by the end of this year. And just as obscure as controlling the market on gantry cranes, China has also gone into California's surrogacy industry. Yes, you heard that right. China is invading American wombs. Surrogacy is illegal in China, and so couples who can't have a kid or don't want to have their own have been flocking to the U.S. One major benefit to doing this is that the U.S. considers children born via surrogacy to be U.S. citizens. So once the child is 21, the parents can apply for citizenship as well. We don't know how many Chinese couples come to California for surrogacy because the state health department doesn't keep track. But NPR spoke to several agencies that suggested there were hundreds, if not thousands of cases a year. The co-founder of a surrogacy agency told NPR, Chinese demand for surrogacy and birth tourism services was so high before the pandemic, he used to rent out entire apartment buildings for Chinese families. So why is California such a destination for Chinese who want surrogates? Well, according to a researcher at the Heritage Foundation, it's because California has permissive laws and because of its relative proximity to East Asia that the Golden State has become an international hotspot for commercial surrogacy. Was that an intentional move by California lawmakers to get more Chinese investment? Maybe. Like I said before, Jerry Brown was really pushing for more Chinese investment. Gavin Newsom has also been, shall we say, quite friendly with China as well. During the pandemic, he faced scrutiny over a $1 billion face mask deal with a Chinese company. Without any bidding, he awarded the contract to Chinese electric car maker BYD, which according to security experts, has some glaring red flags on its record. One of which being, they're an electric car company and not mask makers. That'd be like saying, I'm hungry. Let's go get some hamburgers at Jiffy Lube. Other red flags include a history of supplying allegedly faulty products to the U.S., ties to the Chinese military and Communist Party, 
and possible links to forced labor. And just like that bridge builder I mentioned earlier, BYD has no experience making masks. That deal hit a snag when BYD failed twice to get federal safety approval. And what made it all the more shady was that Newsom agreed to pay half a million dollars up front and then keep the contract secret from the press and legislators. Nothing says I got a great deal like prepaying for a product from a company that's never made it before, that hasn't received government approval, and then trying to hide the details. Oh, and then he extended the contract for a few months later. Newsom is clearly not clear on what the Chinese Communist Party is because he's also praised the Beijing-friendly paper Singtao for its journalistic integrity, despite it being registered as a foreign agent of China. And he sat back and watched as California's pension fund invested millions into Chinese companies, some of them blacklisted by the federal government. So why does California have such a blind spot when it comes to China? I can't say for sure, but I'm guessing it has something to do with love of everything green. Specifically this kind of green. And now it's time to answer a question from the 50 Cent Army, fans who support the show on Patreon. Cam Wong asks, doesn't this program cut both ways? What if in the future these kids break free of the CCP indoctrination, they want to rebel with their military training, won't they be more dangerous if they use their skills against the CCP? Great question, Cam. So Cam is talking about a big effort lately to have young kids in China, kindergartners even, go through military training in school. And Cam, I think you're 100% right. The CCP does not actually want the Chinese people to have viable combat skills. That's why people aren't allowed to own guns in China. The CCP knows they would be used against the regime. So I think this is more about propaganda than training. Get the kids loving the party from a young age. And we did a full episode about these kindergarten training camps, which you can watch here. Thanks for your support and your question, Cam. And if you want to join the 50 Cent Army, Support China Uncensored by clicking this orange button. Just a dollar an episode is all it takes. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.